Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome along to our traditional and uh, uh, fun get-togethers that, uh, unfortunately, I missed last week due to me being uh, elsewhere. There you go. What an excuse. I don't go too deep on, um, on uh, reasons why, but it was fantastic. I was away doing uh, plain air painting, which is painting outdoors in uh, the beautiful area of North Norfolk, so based around Norwich, which is the capital of that area. Absolutely fantastic, very tiring, um, but a great challenge. So I needed to uh, test myself a little bit, and by gum, I did. Anyway, enough of my uh, tales of adventure. Let's welcome folks in, and thanks so much for dropping by, guys. Thanks for uh, waiting for me to uh, to get back in the uh, hot seat in the studio. So first in tonight is uh, Bonnie. Welcome along, Bonnie. And uh, Bonnie's bought new favourite cookies. Uh, uh, Giorgio's Italianos Cookiesos is understood chocolate. That's a uh, beautiful pronunciation, and I hope... Uh, uh, we get a little sample of those a little bit later on, Bonnie. So welcome along. Hi there, Linda. Welcome along to your second live tutorial. So let's see uh, if you um, can paint along with this one and enjoy it as much as the first one. So welcome along. And Marilyn, welcome there. And Rosario, don't you worry. You, you missed the class, but we're back now. So we're going to go uh, better and... Uh, and enjoy it more if we can so i'm sure we can so welcome along there so hi there dawn welcome along you've missed me i've missed you dawn i've missed all of you so i've uh, it's great to be back in the fold uh hi there barbara welcome along you're on vacation but uh, you're still tuning in so that is commitment to the looseness brilliant barbara janice hi there welcome along and sharon welcome yeah, I'm from, uh, as I recall, South Oxfordshire, fabulous. And you always have a beautiful range of um, delicacies that you bring along. So hi there, Sharon, welcome. Hi there, Lou, welcome along. And Emily, welcome. The classic, the uh, the classic phrase, bits and bobs. So I don't know if I, I can't recall if you taught me that or I taught you that, but it's a, a great well used British phrase that uh, sums up absolutely everything about life. It's just bits and bobs really. Welcome along. Hi there Janice, welcome along. And your hairdresser, what was the thing there that made me laugh? Uh, your hairdresser asked if I was a young fella. Absolutely, I'm whatever age you want me to be. So uh, welcome along Janice. Hi there Jenny Bowles from uh, St. Evanage, Centre of the Universe. The best place to ever be, ever, ever. Hope you're doing well there, Jenny. Great to see you. And Tosca, welcome. Hi there from London. I hope you're doing well in the uh, the big capital. And uh, let's have a look. Ashley, AK2031. Welcome along. Thanks so much. And Bill, I'll just shoot through a few more if I may. Welcome, Bill and Teresa and Janet Kyle's with us, everybody. Oh, we've got her up again. We've got her up again. Janet Kyle's with us. Welcome along, Janet. And Alina, welcome. And Robin, oh, my word, there's so many folks. Really do appreciate it. If I've not said hi to you directly, I do apologise. And I'll try and mention your names as we go along. So everybody's always welcome. So, what did I learn? Um, well, I'll drop in a few ideas and things that over... A prolonged period of painting every day um, you start to uh, uh, take on board and uh, adapt and all this sort of thing so I'll remember things as we go along so enough gabbing who's up for uh, joining in with the painting session today me me and me so that's three of us including the loose gang of course who are always at the ready so Get your stuff ready guys, we're going to do the drawing for a start, we're going to uh, get back into it with a uh, simple one, a simple approach, but as ever, always effective. So it's always about the approach and the, uh, and, and the method, that's the key thing. So, good old Peter's back, he went for a dip, but he's back as well, so that's good. He didn't swim out too far. 
Right, I'll just make sure we're on screen. Yeah, of course we are. Okay, let's go to about there. Right, what I'm going to do for a start, as we recall, is reduce the size of the area that I'm going to work with. So a little dot, little dot, take it across, little dot, little dot. Tons of little dots, little Dorothy's we call them, little Dorothy's. Line down that side, line down this aside. Cross the top, cross the bottom. So there's the area I want to work with. And again, there's a couple of reasons for reducing the size. A bigger size is more complicated. There's more complications that um, what the uh, more complications with a bigger piece of paper. So it, fold, it, it cockles more and um, you don't really need that, particularly when you're trying to learn the style. Also, because of all the wet areas, this will retain this or this will, re, uh, this will keep the area flatter because this is still rigid and this is bubbly. So it's not all bubbly, it's half and half. Yeah, if I explain that well, I didn't understand it, do drop... <laughs> Do drop your answers on a postcard because uh, I'm still getting into the swing of this. I'm still actually quite tired from the uh, for the journey. Right, okay. Here's my area. What we're going to do for a start is we want three little rectangles. So we're going to start about a third of the way up, maybe a quarter. Let's go a quarter. There we are. And in the centre, we want a little rectangle. There it is one then to the side we want another one dot 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 cross and here let's have it a bit further away about there another rectangle yeah all they are very loosely applied um, and again it's better to just make loose little marks and then you get your eye in for the positioning size and all of the things if you're too committed with your initial lines a lot of people say I should have been committed a long time ago. But if you're too committed with your initial lines, you've got to either work around them and right from the um, beginning, it's, uh, it's, it's too restrictive. So get your positions and you can alter them as you go along with a loose line, a light line. Okay, there's my rectangles. So what I'm going to do is put an angle on each side, not too steep and not too shallow. So, uh, little angle there, little angle there, little angle there, uh, maybe one there that you can't really see, and another one just there. How's that sound? Little angle around the bottom, little angle around the bottom. I say little angle, it's a little curve around the bottom. And we've got really three, let's call them vessels, why not? So we've got three vessels, this one's going to finish first, that one's going to finish second, i.e. it's higher up, and that one's going to be third. So the, because they're going backwards, because of perspective, they finish a bit higher. Yeah? Sound cool? Fabulous. There's the little shapes. Right, now what we want is to get some foliage or florals into these areas. So a little dot for the height, and then we're just going to do an umbrella shape across. One umbrella, I'm going to do the same with the second. Two umbrella. So put a line for the centre of these and then you're going to put your umbrella either side to make a nice shape. Now they look a little bit rigid and predictable but with all the flowing and to and fro in then these will bleed about and reshape and give a nice soft edge. Yeah, so there's three muffins. Maybe that's what it is but it's going to be three little um, containers of flowers. Yeah. Right, so let's try and zoom in a little bit. I've got a new uh, zoom -op, zoom matic There it is, look at that. What a winner. $3.99, if not $4.99. Right, got that in. Cool. Right, so let's have a little look. Just give me one moment, folks. Right, okay.
my mouse is not working well it's eating all the cheese in the fridge unless it's somebody else but uh, that'll be looked at right okay there's the drawing guys there is the drawing we're going to get the light coming in from this away yeah so that's from uh, the top left and the light's going to cascade down here and it's going to throw shadows along this away okay so that's everything for the drawing quick simple easy and um, no no detail at all really just basic shapes basic shapes right let's have a little look uh, Oh, sorry, a yeah, quick question from Jenny there about my little journey. Oh, I keep telling everybody. Um, were you painting in groups in Norfolk or doing your own thing? I was, it varied. Um, the groups, <laughs> really, we went independently to get to different places. Um, and obviously all the social distancing things were uh, in place. But then when we got there, um, all the artists came back together again. So... Uh, it was quite funny one day we were by the seaside at Winterton on Sea, really worth a visit, beautiful place. And uh, I think all of the sand dunes for a good few hundred yards along the beach, there was an artist on top of everyone. So um, most of the paintings were the, the sea and the cliffs and then an artist or two in each painting. So it's quite, uh, quite amusing. Right, okay guys, so we've got the drawing done. Uh, let's have a little look at the paints we're going to use. So these are, I thought, what might be appropriate this evening. Watercolour paints, yay! We do. We use all the right stuff, we use all the right stuff. So the colours we're going to use are, we've got cat orange, uh, Indian red, we've got uh, lemon yellow, we've got uh, mauve just there I believe, I think that's mauve, but one of those, mauvey mauve. Ultramarine blue, uh, royal blue, turquoise, and sap green. So they're all the little guys we're going to use. And again, if you've not seen this before, the way I place the paints out is, uh, shall we call it, economically. So we don't really use that much paint. Um, but I place them out in a line. So I'll just put a little bit of this out vitally uh, very low on this particular one ultramarine blue but basically hold the tube upright squeeze and drag and that puts it in a nice little paste form so you're not digging about fully clogging your brush up and then having to spend half of your time getting the paint out of your brush before you get anywhere with it so just a little line directly onto the palette not in the little wells because they again you have to scoop everything out it's um it, it clogs your brush up, it's a problem. So you don't want problems, you want solutions and easy ways to do this. A uh, quick couple of questions, how is Toby, Emily? Thank you for asking. Um, he's do Well, he's doing very well. Um, he went away with us for a few days, uh, but we had an incident, Emily and everyone else. We had a little bit of an incident. It was just yesterday, and you may see it on the national news. Um, because I had come in from painting outdoors and I thought I'll make myself a nice cheese sandwich. A little cheese sandwich out of a French baguette. Beautiful, really looking forward to it. But it was still in the plastic sleeve. So I, uh, I cut a bit off, luckily. And then I thought, right, I'll just scoop, swoop it down to the bottom of the plastic sleeve. Unfortunately, I got the wrong end. So the French baguette shot out of the plastic sleeve straight into Toby's little mouth, and he legged it. It was about three times the size of him, but he legged it. And we were chasing a baguette and a mop around the house, trying to get the baguette back. We, unfortunately, it's, it, was, it was sad news. He, he, he got through most of the baguette. So uh, we gave him a little bit of cheese later, so it, it, it equated to a uh, nice cheese cob. So uh, he's not eating much today because we've got nothing left. Right, there he goes. Good old Tobes. Right, let's get started guys, let's get started. I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with Mini Dave. And just a quick caveat on little Mini Dave is, I quite often use 
your Dangerous Dave. So there's Mini Dave, there's Dangerous Dave. They're both synthetic. They've got nice springy, bouncy bristles. So they always go back into shape straight away. So they're not flopping about. But I tend to use Mini Dave on the demos because of the size of the shape pa uh, painting I'm going to do. Generally, I use Dangerous Dave. Yeah. But for this, I use Mini. So don't just use Mini Dave on everything. Consider the size of the painting you're going to do, and then consider the uh, brushes and get everything lined up. Right, here we go. Are you ready, folks? Five, four, seven, nine, two, one, go. Okay, fabulosa, fabulosa. Bit of water on Mini Dave, yeah? And we're going to start with the front one. So just in from the side of the muffin, we're going to put a little bit of water, so leaving that dry, and drag a little bit across, only to the other end of the muffin. Yeah, cool as custard, Mr. Mustard. Then we're going to use a little bit, very weak, very weak, lemon yellow. So you're going to tap that in, bap, 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 bap. A little bit more, bap, 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 bap. We tap it because we should retain some white areas of this space that we're working on. I'll call it space, not a bad little word. I've learned some new words this week, space being one of them. And Toby knows the word space because he thought to himself, I've got space in my tummy for a massive French baguette. There we go. Now we've got a little bit of cad orange, again very weak. We're just tapping it down, bop, bop. Yeah, taking it to this edge. Now, a little bit of insider knowledge from inside my brain. What we're doing here is we're going light. Yeah, light hitting there first. White light, that's so you couldn't get any lighter. Then we've got cad orange. No, we've not. We've got lemon yellow. So it's light again, but it's getting a bit darker. And then we've got cad orange, which is darker. So we've got light, medium, dark. Everything you do, I do it for you, yeah? But everything you do needs to be treated in the same way. Light, medium, dark, straight across, yeah? They're almost mushrooms, Sharon, almost mushrooms. You'll see in a few moments. So we've got all that on. Now we're just gonna leave that for a moment. Now we're gonna do this one, yeah? Same thing, water on Mini Dave, a few little dabs down. So dab is a little dot, push it down. What it does is create different shapes. We only take it up to the edge of this area here. Yeah. Then we're going to go in with royal blue, or it could be cerulean blue or light blue, whatever you've got. Don't really matter. Don't really matter. Plonk it down at the top edge. Yeah. Another bit. Plonk it down. You see how I'm working backwards towards the first one? Cool, so do I, because I'm in the room where it happened. Now we're going for Mauve. I'm sorry, I think Viv, I don't know if I answered your question. Welcome Viv, welcome, hope you're doing well in Colchester. Uh, Mauve, and it's a Windsor and Newton, and it is um, a Cotman's one. So just the, uh, how do we call it? Not cheap, less expensive brand. So we're just dabbing that in. So what we're doing here is two things. This is light, that's medium. The dark you can't really see because it's behind there. And the second thing we're actually doing without even knowing is negatively shaping and carving out little bits of the first area. So it's not a straight line, it's just dibbity dabbity do, chasing in. Now, bleeding in there, I quite like that. Got that. So now we'll do that same thing again, but we'll do it over this side. Actually, one more thing I need to do just on the top edge is a little bit of ultramarine blue. Just at the bottom edge. You're trying to guesstimate where the light gets darker. Yeah. Got that on. One more, do you think? Why not? Bit of water, little dabs for a start. Don't just plate paste it on because wherever water is the paint will flow. So I've got that on. Royal blue. Bit there. 
over the top. Move. Down here. This is just negatively picking out this front one. And then uh, ultramarine blue bottom edge. Yeah, so I'll just do that slowly, push it down, move it down any direction. There's not a specific skill to the brushwork. Just do it gently and build it up. Key thing is not to just plonk it on and um, let it go everywhere. Control, a little bit of control is good. So I've got that on. Right, got those three on. Now let's get a few little vase vases or voses or vosines on at the bottom. A little bit of water just there, a little bit of water just there. And where are we? Just there. Yep. Cool. Fabulous. Cat orange. So, got a nice bit of cat orange on there. I'm going to start here. I'm going to place down the edge of Mini Dave and just drag him across to about halfway. Now, yeah. I'll do these independently. Second colour is Indian Red. Take that across. Because the paints join in here, it will flow back that way and go this way where a place is as well. But if you start too far across, it just overwhelms everything and bleeds across. So we've got that second one. Then we've got, uh, let's go for, I think, royal blue again just this bottom edge so just here I'm shaping here and pulling this back and across yep voila fabulous oh my word right got that one on second one now I'm going to put some water on but I'm taking it in from the edge if I touch there it's going to bleed in so I take it about halfway Cad orange, and again when I put the paint on, I'll just use the edge of the brush to shape for a start. Got that on, Indian red. And then, um, I'm actually going to use mauve this time. For the dark edge. Reason for that is I've got a lot of mauve I want to get rid of um, and also at the front it's a, a bit lighter and it, it, it changes uh, tone from the ones that took back. Yeah, voila. I will drop a little bit of royal blue and uh, ultramarine blue in as well. Job done. Then one more. You ready for one more? Cool. A little bit of water. Keep it away from this one. Drag across. Indian red. And ultramarine blue. There we go. So we've got three little vessels of flowers bleeding about, doing their own thing. Right, now we can add a little bit of greenery. So I'm going for, I'm going to go for turquoise for a start. Just on the inevitable mini Dave again, just at the edges. I'm going to drag a few little wafers down. Again, little wafers. So these could be little, bit, little bits of greenery just poking through the flowers. So 
same here. Maybe vary it slightly. So I'm going to go for sap green rather than turquoise. Absolutely. Nancy, almost cupcakes. Cupcakes with leaves. Dropping this on, little dots. Key with this is don't make them too big. Otherwise it predetermines the size of any flower heads. And then the last one, we're going to have a sap green and then we'll make it a bit darker as well. Little dots. And we don't have to get all these on in one foul swoop. We can go we can do them in two foul swoops. I.e. we can go back and add a few anytime we like. Try not to make them too smooth, so make them a bit raggedy edged at times. Then what you need to do while that's just bleeding about a bit, what about a cup of tea folks? Don't forget the cup of tea. There it is. Milk, no sugar. Now the only thing this week, because I've been away and I've been on a bit of a fitness uh, regime, I've decided to steer clear of chocolate or anything, anything that could cause me to put on a little bit of weight. So the main thing this week, that won't be happening um, at all. We can't do that. We've got to look after our figures and uh, being looses we're very much in control of that sort of thing so uh, ooh, let's have a little look it's um, essential that you get your diet right for painting loose ooh, ooh. sorry folks oh Mmm, absolutely. Essential protein, that's all I eat. Protein, vitamin tablets, fresh air, and I think it's a, uh, oh, my daughter made it. It's delicious. I forget what it's called. It begins with D and ends in delicious. It's good. There we go. Might have another one of those later if I can find any. If Toby's not beat me to it. Sorry about that, folks. I, I totally digress. Right, let's have a little look. So, at the bottom, we're going to get a little bit of shadow. Yeah? So a little bit of water there, round the front. Now then, here's, here's an interesting part. Through the gap here, I want to drag this out. Long shadows are quite impressive. Yeah. Sorry, Janet, I do apologise. It's um, delicious. Yeah. I've got one for everyone. So don't worry about that. It's just delivering. And maybe when it arrives, it ain't going to look quite as yummy. But uh, it'll be okay. Right, okay. Mini Dave. Cat orange. Edge of here. Little line. Now take it out just to the edge of where that one is. Then I'm going to drag that underneath. Oh, it's five a day, all right, uh, Viv. Five souffles a day. I think that's uh, what the government directive is. So cat orange, dragging this round. And then I'm going to turn that into Move again. Not overly strong. That line of light coming through there, I quite like. Then I'm going to go for Royal Blue. So I'm really just echoing the colours that we've used and then pulling this out. And when I say long shadows, quite often you just have a static shadow that's directly underneath the object. But to drag the shadow out, so you can take it here and then soften it off. And it just gives a bit more of 
of a dramatic effect. Which is not that I want to cause any sort of drama. I'm just a steady guy who likes chocolate a lot. Okay, got that on. A little bit of water, I can waft this through, give it some nice little curved shapes. This could almost go off the page. Voila, yeah. So once we've got that shadow on, again, it's a vital piece, and actually it, what it does deplete you of is, is sugar. Um, so what you could do then, have another bit of fondue. That'd be perfect. It's just looking at me. Mm. Okay. So it's only a little tip, but it's a great tip. So you need plenty of chocolate. Okay. Got all this on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a few flowers. Now we don't paint the flowers, yeah? Key thing, do not paint the flowers. Paint around the flowers, and they're only little flower buds, and all we need to do is a few little shapes. So I've got Miss Rigger, welcome Miss Rigger. Beautiful to see you again, she's been swimming. And we're going to circle around some dots, yeah? So what I'm going to do, on the, really the very light flowers at the front, I'm going to have some uh, Indian red, reasonable strength. I'm going to put some little dots down. So there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. Let's start with those, yeah? They are purportedly the centres of the flowers. Now I'm going to have a bit of mauve and Indian red mixed on Miss Rigger and I'm going to just draw a few little wavy bits, a little bit thicker than that, wavy bits around some of these centres. Yeah. Generally I'm drawing these to the right hand side. So got those on, they look a bit obvious, yeah, which is ideal. But now I've just got water on the brush and I'm going to put this against this line I've put on and just drag water back from it. So what that does is bleed off the paint and negatively pick out the shape of the flower. So I don't know if you can see that, maybe you can, maybe you can't, but that picks out negatively some little flower shapes quite simply without painting. So you've got the underpainting that's already there and then you've got this negative painting that picks out the shape. Now we don't do it all over the place. I'll do a couple just here. Sorry about my phone there folks. Always sounds as if somebody's on, somebody, somebody's following me with a glockenspiel. And uh, Funny enough, when I did turn around once in Norfolk, somebody was following me with a glockenspiel. I thought it was my phone going off. So we've got the centres, little shape, little shape, glockenspiel, that's a word. Never used that for a while. Also, I'm changing the colour of some of these centres, so not all the same. Now, water again, so I've got, I only do two or three because they'll dry by the time you, if you do 10, they'll have dried by the time you get round to it. Particularly if you're talking to the guy with the glockenspiel and eating uh, chocolate food cake. Not time for everything. Now what will happen now is these little dots, the viewer's eye, don't tell them, but the viewer's eye will pick these little dots up as centres of flowers. So you only have a few that you need to I'll highlight and then the dots will become the centre of flowers and then your little brain will say there's a lot of flowers on there but what we've done is we've programmed folks a little bit to see flowers 
where we want them to see them. Yeah. So these ones on this far side, I can just put a couple of little waves of circular, circularness, lessness. Proper word. Please do Google it. You do that as much or as little as you like. If you do it a lot, one thing you'll learn is you may see that that really can be enough. So you don't have to do too much. So I've got that on. And again, you, you could sporadically put them in places over here. And we can do the same with the flowers at the back. Patrick Moore, there's a good one, Viv. Absolutely. I wonder where he'd gone. I think he's in my studio. I keep hearing this voice at night shouting, look at the stars, look at the stars. I thought he was dreaming, but apparently not. Right, do it on here, but what we're going to do is appropriate colours. So we're not going to use these, because you won't see them. We're going to use blues and purples. A few little scents. Almost, your eye on this one will pick up the suggestion of the flowers on this one. So don't overrun it with tons of them. Just put a few down, bleed them off, and then see what they look like. Got that on? Round the edge. And where the, where the actual excess of the paint bleeds to doesn't really matter. Got that on? So has anybody bought chocolate with them this evening? Please present your chocolate to yourselves. This will help the chocolate industry. So we're doing this, dragging a few around. And again, if you're unsure or a bit tentative with it, just test it on a, or try it on a little bit of paper next door to your painting. That's always uh, a good thing to do, because when you're diving onto a, a fresh painting, um, you but can be a bit tentative about it. You don't want to ruin it, particularly if it's going well, or you feel it's going well. But always remember the 5th of November. No, wrong thing, wrong time of year. Always remember that everything you do is a learning benefit. Now you may think, oh no, it's gone wrong and blah, 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 which we all do. But when you start to think that, well, then just switch your thought over to, it's, I, I'm learning from this, I'm learning. I'm not learning never to do it again. I'm gonna take up uh, windsurfing. I mean, you're learning for next time. So you're always getting more valuable information in there. So just switch over to, this is a learning exercise now. If you feel it's gone too far, because you'll only be battling with yourself mentally and thinking, oh, well, well, well. we don't need to do that. So I had a few times last week in Norfolk. I don't know if I mentioned I went to Norfolk, but um, sometimes that was happening. So you have to switch off and, and regroup mentally at times. And the more you do it, the more you be and cue it. Other department stores are available. So I've got these on, wafting them about. And your actual speed of placing these down will increase as you go along. So the first few you'll be tentative and then after that you won't be quite so much. So I've got those on, a few at this side. Dark chocolate Tosca, blonde, that's good. Expect us all round in about, what time is it? Yeah, 25 minutes. Leave door on latch. Right. So, sorry Tosca, I didn't mean to invite a lot of people, a lot of loose watercolourists round to your house without prior invitation. Got these on. Again, same sort of thing. Again, try and make them a bit darker this edge, this side. 
So you, you, you're keeping that idea of light to dark all the way across the uh, peninsula of painting. Water, there it is, scooting around. So lessons from last week, what did I learn? I learned that repetition, not, yeah, repetition, each day painting with a purpose, i.e. it wasn't just go to the studio, it was get up, get in the car, drive 20, 30 miles, find somewhere to park, find a spot, defend yourself from seagulls and other things. And um, and then stand there for an hour to and, and and do what you're meant to do. So it'd be very easy to stop, go and have a cup of tea, or find a million excuses to not do. But sticking at it each day got easier. Really, more tired but easier because you you got into a routine and and you got a feel for how long you needed to be there to do that painting. Uh, what else? Um, oh yes, if you get an offer of a sale of a painting while you're painting it, sell it. <laughs> I think um, I didn't sell any paintings at the show, but I could have sold three of the paintings I did when I was actually do, doing them. Because I was three times approached, and People were saying, are you selling that? Can I buy it off you? And I said, no, unfortunately, it's got to go in the show. You can go to the show. And then uh, I missed the sale. So if somebody shows interest, drop everything and um, uh, sell it. <laughs> and do it again because it's a quick process. But it was very flattering and, um, and very enjoyable. Right. Oh, did, did we go to East Ruston Gardens? Vicarage Gardens. Now then, I'm not sure, Jenny. I went to the Bishop's Garden, which was really next to the cathedral in the centre of Norwich. So I don't know if it was East Ruston, if we're talking about the same one. That was beautiful. And there's some absolutely stunning places about to go. It really was breathtaking, some of the places. So they'd all been sorted out. Um, but I would definitely go again. Uh, drop of a hat and if you do get a chance to paint outdoors give it a go no not not the same one ah oh dear next time Jenny next time I'll meet you there bring some chocolate I'll bring some chocolate as well but uh, I'll definitely go back and if you get the chance to go outdoors and paint on your own or with somebody else uh, well worth a whirl it really is so little dots, just building this up quite nicely, gradually. Was I first to finish each day? Um, yes. <laughs> it was interesting. Most most people were oil painters. So there was only a couple of watercolourists there. Uh, so and hence the, uh, I didn't come away with any trophies, unfortunately. Um, but I wasn't really in it for that. But... Um, there was a lot, lot of interest in the uh, oils, but uh, as for speed, I think some people were taking five, six hours a day to do a painting. I think I'd done my, I'd, I'd set up, drawn it, painted it, put it in the car, and gone to the pub uh, within about an hour. So the the great thing about this style of painting is a it can be done outside quite easily and b it's quick so you do have time for other things and um, i did uh, take my mum along as well so she loved it and um, i had time to spend with her as well which was fabulous right you're on no but no dogs allowed okay so so you you can't bring winnie I can't, does that exclude Toby though, Jenny? Because he's not really classed as a dog anymore. He's just a skip on legs that devours anything that falls in his path. So I might be able to get away with that. A wheelie bin. He's like a little wheelie bin. Right. 
you've got a bit of uh, Perylene Green, Miss Rigger. It, yes, I the I do agree with, as in I would do it, I would say that, but you can get in, you can do your painting, and you can move on to other things. And again, you're not committed to hours and hours and hours of uh, commitment, which I, I it was great, really was, and really it's one of the things that drew me initially to the style in the first place it was that you can get a great effect very quickly when you've learned the basics um, and if you've not had a look at the website yet or some of the other things we've got over there they'll give you the grounding then it's repetition learn 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 and then you'll be off but it frees you up you get a good result it's good it's good 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 Right, sorry about that folks, a few little darker bits of green there. Now some of these little bits of green could be moved around flower shapes just to pick them out. And the further you go into this, as in the more dots and dashes you put on, obviously the tighter it gets. I think you're right there, uh, Gritty, yeah. Uh, it's. Um, it's very rewarding and people do appreciate the uh, the looseness as in the interpretation the, the ability to re to interpret your painting through their eyes so I had a lot of uh, very favorable comments which was nice mainly from my mom so I like what you've done with your hair right there we go. So I'm just dragging a few little bits of down. And these are really just dots with Miss Rigger. Again, extending out a little bit, give it a little bit of movement to the edge. Right now, let's have a little look just here. So just on the uh, vessels at the bottom, the um, flower pots really, you can drag a little bit of water across. And again, it's just water. And again, if you go backwards and forwards over the same line, then you pick up the pigment and a bit of tissue and then you can get a little bit of texture onto the actual vases themselves. Maybe a few little dots and dashes on the base so we can either do those in two ways we could do them quite slowly like this or we could get this rigger and do them like that so that's the uh, quicker method but these just add a little bit of texture these could be petals that are flown off again it leaves the viewer to decide as to uh, what's what's it all about Alfie what's it all about No, absolutely, Viv, good point. When it all gets too technical and we've got to refer to uh, masses of literature about how we do a certain thing, no, just go with your uh, intuition. If you're enjoying it, that's great. If you're not, then obviously you're fighting against something, so adjust it until it works exactly for you. Your painting, your time painting is the only thing that matters. And uh, also there's that thing of... Um, other people's opinion it's all quite nice but when the opinion is um, if you did if you just did it this way I would like it well looks like you're not gonna like it then <laughs> because it's you paint for yourself and then if other people like what you've done the end result then that's fantastic 
but that's the, that's the thing you'll find with commissions. You'll have to paint to the other person's uh, tune, which you will, I find, um, a little bit difficult because I'm always thinking, will they like it? Is this okay? I need to check, I need to check, I need to check. I don't want to do that. I used to do it um, for work quite a while ago, painting, and I don't want to return back to that. So uh, I think when people do ask me if I'll do a painting for them of their certain thing, I always say, oh, I'm just washing my hair for the next year or two. I don't want to do it. <laughs> Water again each time just take a step back maybe have a little bit more cake and that will um, then you can take a overall view of the painting. Again it's quite easy to just plough through the painting and not step back and assess it. So you need to be your own um, gentle critic as well. Let's have a look. Anything else? I think maybe just a few little lines. You could see a few stems in places. Again, if they're on the uh, right hand side have them falling generally to uh, that side you don't want them going that particular way center going upwards this side going that away bits and bobs brilliant phrase that bits and bobs Again, you can put them on and just use a little bit of water. Sorry, uh, just reading Teresa's there. Blimey, yeah. So it is that. And the other thing, you, you inadvertently get dragged into a niche area. So as you say, if you, you'll get good, because if you concentrate on, for example, as Teresa says, sailboats, you'll get very good. If that's all you do, you cannot but help but get good. But then you'll get, um, because you, you'll, be initially, you'll be initially attracted by the um, praise, and then maybe by the commissions, and then you'll end up doing sailboats forever. And you might hate sailboats after so long, but what have you done? You've closed off avenues to other uh, subjects, and this could happen with a style of painting. Again, somebody could come along and say, yeah, I love that. I really love the, what you've done. You might not, but you're getting seduced by um, uh, opportunities. So you, you get dragged along in certain directions. So always take a step back. Every so often take a step back and reassess. <coughs> Is this enjoyable? Is this what I want to do? Is it satisfying? If you can answer that each time, continue. If there's uh, little doubts creeping in, isolate them and think, well, what is it? What is the problem? Or what has happened so sometimes it could be over familiarity with the subject um, or you may be inspired by somebody else which is a great thing maybe that's what brought you here in the first place because um, it happens with everybody you don't just think it up you, th you you get a feeling about what you think would be a fabulous way to paint then you go and hunt people on down not in a nasty way not like the the glockenspiel guy um, but once you've uh, on a bit of a trajectory, on a bit of a roll with a subject, with a style, then you look into it, investigate, and then quite often you go with the flow and follow that along. So, just adding a few little flicky bits, little dibs and dabs, 
bits and bobs and then just a few little dots under the foliage as well so I've got ultramarine blue just here so I'm finding where my bottom edge of the flowers on this one may be and they don't have to be where the lightest bits have fallen you can still re-carve the shape to what you want it to be bit of water again bit of light now I'm trying to actually bend that round so it's not just straight because that's a curved shape same here just there a little bit there a little bit here I'll put the two on while I'm at it then a bit of water same thing and here so I'm dipping the water into that reservoir of paint I've put on and dragging it around so I think we're about there folks for this week for our uh, welcome back and our get together that I have missed as much as you guys so it's great to be back uh, back together again a bit like take that or other people but um, so this is the one that's going on this week it's going to uh, be our little challenge for the week uh, so by all means paint away guys post your uh, uh, beautiful paintings share it with friends tell everybody about getting loose and um, uh, invite them to pop over to uh, loosewatercolors.com which is my website where I do all of my uh, teaching and again I've got some new videos to go on and we'll have a little bit of a relook and a revamp for uh, some interesting things as I say that we did over the week bits and bobs Emily absolutely bits and bobs <laughs> and um, what else have we got yes I'm going to put a new challenge uh, for so asking for your photos to be sent in um, to our members group which is the uh, Facebook arm of the loosewatercolors.com so if you join us you get mem membership of loose watercolors uh, members group so we'll need photos uh, I'll tell you the title tomorrow guys and we'll get plenty of those on and we'll get steaming away we shall take the world by loose storm very very quickly so anyway enough of me gabbling on thanks for joining me you've been stars um, I shall finish off my uh, chocolate muffin cake now and maybe find another one in the fridge area if Toby's not at it if there's chocolate on his nose I know it's going to be a difficult evening. So thanks again guys, take care and I shall see you all very, very soon.